Greetings, Productive Programmer. This is Elixir in five minutes, and this tutorial is specifically designed for anybody new to Elixir or who is new to Elixir and is taking my Phoenix Live View course at ProductiveProgrammer.com, which you can consume the first hour of the course for free by signing up at ProductiveProgrammer.com. To get started with Elixir, you will need to install Elixir at elixir-lang.org, the official website of Elixir. There is an install section here at the top, and it will give you the installation for all the major distributions, and they're super simple to get started. For example, on Mac, all I have to do is run brew install Elixir, and on Windows, there's a simple download installer, and Linux is also very easy as well. While we're here, let's just mention the guides that are on Elixir Lang. The official guides may take a couple hours to go through. This is a great resource to continue to learn in. Our tutorial will take just five minutes and cover the 20% that will get you the 80% essence feeling of Elixir. Or in the case, if you're taking my Phoenix Live View course, 100% of everything you'll need to know because I dive into more Elixir concepts and explain them thoroughly as you learn them while learning Phoenix Live View. So this course is a really great way to continue your learning of Elixir while also also learn in a web framework that is one of the most productive web frameworks available today. After you have Elixir installed, you can run Elixir-V to verify your installation on your command line. Don't worry about the version of Elixir you're using, they're all pretty stable and backwards compatible, so you should be able to follow along with this tutorial no problem. As long as your version is showing up there, you can also type IEX to enter an interactive terminal. This terminal will be like a REPL for Python or Node.js, very similar. And so you can execute commands here, such as 5 plus 2 to do a math problem. We can print hello world by doing io.puts hello world, and puts is very similar to doing a print in other languages. We can concatenate using this syntax to concatenate strings, and we can also store them in a variable similar to other languages using the equal sign. Now we have hello world stored inside of a variable. In Elixir, always use double quotes when you're making a string, otherwise single quotes actually refer to a character list, and if we use double quotes, it is not a list. A good rule of thumb is to just always use double quotes for strings in Elixir. Most likely that's what you mean. Truthiness is very simple in Elixir. False and nil are basically not truthy and everything else is truthy. And we can compare truthy values very similar to other languages. And Elixir is really a pretty lightweight language with only three ways to define collections, such as a list, which can be a mix of data types, such as the number one, the string two, and the number three, stored inside of a list. A map, which is a key value pair, and a tuple, which typically holds a fixed amount of items. Notice here the strange syntax with the colon before it is an atom. Anything with a colon before it can be an atom inside of Elixir, and you can define your own. These are typically used as identifiers across the language. The most common use case you'll see is OK or error to indicate the status returned from a function. And finally, the most important concept in my opinion about Elixir to really understand the language is to understand that the equal symbol is not an assignment operator like other languages. It's actually a pattern matching symbol. So here x equals 1 does assign 1 to the value x. But if we do 1 equals x, we also get the return value of 1. That's because Elixir tries to match the right-hand side against the left-hand side, and if they both match, it just returns the value that was matched, which is why 1 gets output here on the terminal. However, if we try to do 2 equals x, we would actually get an error because the values don't match. But Elixir does treat it like an assignment operator if you have the variable on the left-hand side then x will be set to 2. And a very common and useful feature that makes Elixir highly productive with pattern matching is when you use it on maps. So here we have a map with the key hello and the value world. And if we want to capture the value world and store it inside of a variable, all we have to do is use a map that's very similar to the one that we're trying to pattern match on. And where the value would be, we can set a variable. We'll call it hello. And then we'll use the match operator to match against a map that is very similar in structure where we're matching both of the maps on their shared key where we'll capture the value world against the variable hello. So when we execute this, the variable hello will now store the pattern matched value that it matched on the right hand side. Don't worry if any of this is confusing. I go through this at a much slower and digestible pace in the full version of my Phoenix Live View course where I explain all of these concepts nice and slow as we go through them. And you can expand upon the Elixir language by learning Phoenix Live View at the same time. 